friends! Welcome to my very first tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a trim board. I was making some trim for my 18th century gown and I was sitting both on my couch and on my bed trying to figure out how to do double box plates in some way that made sense while I was sitting there on the couch and it just became kind of a mess. I came upstairs and I have one of those grid boards on my cutting table that shows me inch by inch so I was trying to do it on there but that's plastic. The best thing I came up with was to do it over on my ironing board. However, my ironing board is slightly too low. I have to hunch over it to do it. I am taping a measuring tape to it. It's just not super fun. So I took a page out of Candace Kling's tutorials and her workshops, which I have attended, where she gives you a old, you know those things that go inside of fabric? They're like cardboard. I have one. This thing. She gives us those to pin into during class, which is completely fabulous. But while you're sitting there watching yourself pin into this through cardboard, and things are kind of wonky, you're watching her pin into something that's absolutely beautiful. My other friend, Noelle, who weirdly is also named Noelle, has one of these boards, but it's gigantic, and she uses it to uh, make trim, she uses it to iron out her bolts of fabric on, she uses it for everything she sews on, and she just puts it on top of her cutting table. Her cutting table is slightly smaller than mine, but it works really well for her. So I took a page out of her book, and I decided to make one of these trim boards. This is a pretty much exactly two feet long, and about a foot wide, and this will fit exactly on my lap, and it's about how much trim I can deal with at one, any one time, and then once I get it down and measured out and perfect on this board, I can just pin it to itself and move along my trim. I think that this idea is fantastic for those of you guys who don't have a lot of money. If you can go to your fabric store and get a bunch of these, they actually too, do totally work. This is super bougie. So today I'm going to show you how I make this. Now mind you, while I show you this, <laughs> this is the first time I've ever made one of these. So you're going to see me go through the process of mistakes, you're going to see staples needing to come out, you're going to see a bunch of other stuff. I'm showing you all of this so that you can see that when it happens to you, it's completely normal. Let's get started. First I would like to mention before I show you all of the tools and equipment that I'm using is that you don't have to use this stuff. You could absolutely use wood that you have around your house if you have any lightweight wood. You could possibly pull for an old quilt for some of the batting that goes inside of here. You could use old fabric if you have some. There's no reason you need to use quilt batting, although it does make it kind of extra cushy and nice, so that's an option. But just because I'm using this stuff doesn't mean you need to use this. It took me probably an hour to make this, all in all. I don't think it needed to take that. I think it probably could have taken a half an hour. I was setting up cameras and filming and stuff like that, so I think you could probably do it a lot faster. So it's not a super heavy duty project as far as time constraints or materials that you'll need to use. Let's get into materials. Okay, to get started with this, I have purchased a staple gun and staples. And I went to Lowe's and they had boards that were not very expensive and I just had him cut it in half. This There's no size here, like you can pick whatever size you want. I think about two feet is pretty good and probably at least a foot wide is good, but honestly you could make this board as big or small as you want it to be depending on what you're going to use it for and all that stuff. These two things together were about $33 and they cut this board in half for me at at Lowe's so you can definitely ask them to do that. I then went to Doan and I got this toasty cotton 100% natural cotton quilt batting. I would prefer cotton or wool on the inside just because I know you can iron the synthetic stuff and whatever but it makes me more comfortable to have it be cotton. Uh, I just don't know like how hot I'm ever gonna make it and I don't know. I, there's really no reason for that. If you want to use synthetic do you. I'm not, I just, I bought this one. <laughs> I'm not a snob about it. I just, I, for some reason, I think this is a little bit more heat tolerant. So that is what I chose because the synthetic setting on my iron is at the bottom and the cotton is way at the top. So I figure it can take more heat. So that's basically why I picked this. Uh, it was originally like $50. I bought the medium to large for full and queen size projects because this is made for quilts. Um, you could buy a cotton in any way you want or a batting in any way that you want and you could buy it in any you know fiber content that you want i am not here to judge lastly i bought something to go over the top of it which was this canvas duck 
uh, which I found pretty cheap at Joanne. I also have a brown one. I might make two boards because I have two here um, so that I can look at light projects on a dark background and dark back projects on a light background because sometimes you want to be able to see it and be able to see your stitches and stuff. So I might make two. We'll see. I might make two just because the first one might go badly. We will see. Anyway, uh, this definitely was not very expensive. I think it was a couple dollars a yard, and for both of these things, this was actually expensive. This was probably like $50, except I had a 50% off anything that wasn't on sale coupon, so I got it for like $25, and I also went back. So, pro tip, you can go put this in your car, come back and buy this in at Joann's, and use your coupon again. So, that is what I did, so I got this super cheap too. Definitely do a couple test staples. The batting will go over this, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I will pull mine out with pliers. I did one that was sticking up too far because I wasn't pushing down the staple gun right. Do learn how your staple gun works <laughs> before you start this project. Okay, I'm finding that if I cut, fold this in half, it's just a little bit too much for what I want. What I'm going to do is pile up a bunch of these layers uh, first that are exactly the same size as this board, and then I'm going to do a few layers that are bigger than the board and wrap them around so that the edge is nice and soft. So what I'm going to do is it's folded so that it's about right and then I'll just cut this once I do it. I'm just laying it basically on top and I'm going to go ahead and cut down this line where the edge is just to make one stack and to make this manageable because this is a giant mess. <laughs> so I'm going to do this a few times just to get a bunch of layers in here. When I feel like it's thick enough, I will come back and tell you how many layers that was. Okay, each fold is actually four, because there's two layers and then that's doubled over. So I have eight on here right now, and it feels actually pretty good. I am gonna make mine extra squishy, which means I'm gonna put another set of four on here, and then the one I wrap over is gonna just be two. So it's gonna be a total of 14 layers. This will be extra, extra squishy. What I'm also finding is that this queen size one, I will probably use most of this, but not all of it. So if you wanted to only make one of these, you might be cool with just buying a twin. I will probably go back and buy a twin to make the other one, and I will let you know if that is the case in the comments. Okay, we are at 12 here. Also, I wanted to mention, please don't feel like this needs to be exact. It's actually better if the edges are kind of all over the place. Um, as you can see, some of them are smaller and some of them are larger. When it wraps over, it'll actually help make that seam to the board a lot smoother so you actually in a lot of ways kind of want that okay so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut a double layer not a quadruple layer and i'm gonna cut it much bigger by several inches so this is like probably five inches bigger this is crazy bigger that's even bigger and then i'm gonna cut like over here you can kind of see the lump in here of where it is because i'm gonna use this one to wrap around the edge and staple down as you can see, I flipped the board over. Um, you wanna line these up pretty well so that everything comes nicely around. Everything looks good here. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and push down on this board pretty hard so that it pulls out all the extra. And I'm gonna staple right along the edge because we're gonna trim this down and then we're going to wrap the canvas over the top of it. Same exact way as this. Okay, I moved you to a tripod so you can see what's going on while I do this. I did alternate what side the folds are on, by the way, when I used the folded pieces underneath. as many staples as you need to and if you don't feel like they sit right like this one doesn't sit right get some needle nose pliers and just pull that guy right back out
as you saw, one whole side didn't even, just didn't work out for me. So that was fine. I took it all out and did it again. It's not a big deal to take them back out and do it again. You just want to make sure they're very flush. So I don't know how really to deal with the corners very well. So what I'm going to do is take out as much of the bulk as I can and then wrap it round um, by cutting all, not quite to the edge. There's a little bit left that I can wrap in. And if you mess this up, it's not a huge deal. Remember, this is this is just for your use anyway. Um, I'm just going to fold in the corners just a little bit and do the same thing with the stapler. And that seems to work very well. Remember, there's another layer that's going over the top of this, and this is just for your use. This isn't like professional, but this actually feels really great. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this down um, as much of this stuff as I can, but I am going to stagger it so that the top one is longer than the underside one, and I'm going to do that all the way around. even handheld again just to show you how small it is it's pretty small it's like maybe like quarter to a half an inch and then maybe an inch to an inch and a half on this side like one of them's yeah, about the same um, and I had a couple of the the staples come back up and that's okay I'm gonna go ahead and just staple this right back down it's not a problem that's the joy of this next I'm gonna go through and staple all the way around again um, maybe like offsetting these just a little bit like here basically on the very edge of this to just hold this taut. Okay, as you can see, we have, we're have we in a place of awesome. This looks great. Looks like it's going to be excellent to pin into all that jazz. Uh, random notes, I use this stuff when I'm making hats. So any of the larger pieces are going to definitely stay with me. And any of the smaller pieces you can just recycle because they're cotton and you can recycle anything that's pure cotton or like wool or natural fiber. So basically, I'm going to do the same thing I just did with this, except I'm going to do it with the duck over the top. And that's just going to make it a little bit more hearty, a little bit less 
inclined to get grubby and gross and it is white <laughs> so it's still gonna get grubby and gross I gotta warn you uh, trim making is not a completely clean clean sport okay so this is kind of grubby <laughs> and it's got a big fold line down the middle so I am gonna take a moment and go ahead and iron this bad boy and get it so that it's as smooth as it can be because I'm OCD and that will annoy the crap out of me. Uh, pro tip on this board, you definitely want this to be the lightest piece of wood you can find. This thing is super light and easy for me to carry around. It's not heavy and clunky. I mean, it's not not big, <laughs> but it's definitely super light. You guys could do this a lot, maybe cheaper if you have some wood around the house already, if you have um, any of this stuff laying around, any kind of batting you want to use. I happen to have this stuck. It is covered in cat hair, so <laughs> I was using that. So you can do this uh, cheaper on the cheap if you'd like to. I think the most that this should possibly cost you is like, I don't know, this whole thing cost me like $50. So you could probably get away with it cheaper if you have even more coupons, stuff like that. If you want to go to a lumber yard, just pick out some wood, cut it yourself, get something. Um, I think this is just pine because it's so so lightweight. Okay, so I'm gonna just go through this entire process again. And the process is exactly the same, except I am going to staple inside of these staples. So I'm gonna be in here, this area. And then once I get the first set of staples in and it trimmed down, I'm just gonna fold the edges under and staple it back down again so it's like a nice clean edge. But that's it, then we're done. I thought you guys would appreciate a more detailed view of what I do at the corners because it's kind of a mess. So I fold straight in, so like this, and then I put my thumb here and then I kind of pick it up and pull it over that so it's all sort of encased. And then once I get that locked in right there, I staple the crap out of it. <laughs>
Okay, and this, yes, it is staple mania on the bottom. You could, of course, take another piece of fabric and cover this. You could glue it down. You could put a little bit more batting in there to pat it out a little bit so it'd be nice on your lap and then glue something over it. You could do all sorts of things here. I personally don't need that. I just need it to sit on a table solidly and this does. So this is what this looks like when I am done. Still, as usual, covered in cat hair. I am really pleased with this guy. I am excited to start making trim on it. Like I said, you can make these in any size, shape, whatever that you'd like. My friend Noelle actually has one that is the size of like most of this table here. Um, and she uses it to actually iron out entire bolts of fabric on. So you could make it that big if you wanted to. You'd probably need a king size one of these and maybe a couple of them. But it's definitely worthwhile and I'm super jealous of her thing. If I had anywhere to put that in my house at all, I would consider making one. I'm kind of considering making one anyway. <laughs> so it was amazing to have and this thing um, should be amazing to be making trim on. So I'm very happy with it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Please tag me in any of these that you make yourself. Um, I would love to see what yours looks like and what you're using them for because you can use these for a myriad of different awesome things. I'm super excited to have mine and I can't wait to start using it. See you guys later. Bye guys.